Hey everybody, um, I hope everybody is having a great week. Um, I'm just making a video because I really wanted to share something that's been on my heart and mind um, lately, but today especially. Um, uh, right now I'm sitting in my car, I just got home from work, I'm still sitting in my car. Um, it's raining here, it's spring in Rhode Island. Um, we actually had snow on Monday and that was really that was horrible because everybody had already like put away their shovels and everything and we thought we were done but that's Rhode Island for you and so today it's raining um I just wanted to share something that's been on my heart and mind because spring for me always indicates a season of change that's just always what God puts on my heart around this time of year it's like that February March and April kind of transition um where we kind of come out of like the craziness of the holidays and everything and and we have that lull in January and February where we can almost become like complacent I guess and become comfortable with the way things are um, because the holidays are so chaotic for everybody I know for me they are um, lots of caffeine lots of uh, family and and friends and it's all great but it's very exhausting and so uh, come March and April I always kind of find myself in this uh, as the season's changing, I kind of find myself in this like wake up season of like, okay, what's what's going on in my life? Like, what are my priorities? Uh, what am I working towards? What needs to change? And uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and just uh, be honest with myself. And it always seems like this time of year is when God starts to put things on my heart in my life that are going to be changing or um, or are not going to stay the same as they currently are. And I think that what I really wanted to get to the heart of is, is I feel like there's this common, um, this lie that is kind of in Christian circles right now. And I don't, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I feel like we, um, kind of buckle and say, if something's hard, then it must not be of God. If something's difficult, if something's not easy, um, if it doesn't go exactly the way we think it should, uh, quote unquote, like smoothly, I guess, um, that we're, we're not in the will of God or that it should be, we, we, we say, uh, if, if God intended this for me, it should be easy. And that's the biggest lie in the world. Um, I am learning that through every trial that God takes me through, that refinement is really painful. Uh, and as Christians, I think that one of our daily prayers should be, God, please refine me. I mean, Paul every day said um, that he had to beat his mortal body into submission. And I don't know about you, but when I think of the word beat my mortal body, that doesn't sound like a fun experience. It doesn't sound like something that's easy. Um, you know, I think that be careful when, when God gives you a vision for your life. If God sets something in front of you and you... Uh, strongly believe it. I don't think that you need to be a hundred percent positive fall on your sword because none of us are God but I believe that if we're really seeking after what God wants he's only gonna bless that if we're not looking for our own selfish gain we're really looking at God what do you want for my life what do you want me to do um, and and we're really working towards that every day if you if you see that vision in front of you don't don't let anybody deter that don't um, you know Pastor Samuel Rodriguez, he's, he's amazing, and he's a great, great man of God. In one of his sermons, he says, um, you cannot tolerate things that you should be rebuking. Uh, the moment anybody steps in on your life and says that the vision that God's given you is false or that uh, what you're working towards is, is impossible, uh, that needs to be removed from your life. I'm not saying you necessarily need to remove that person. Maybe you do need to remove that person. I don't know. It depends on if the situation is toxic or not. But um, you need to at least remove their words of negativity or, or distance yourself from that. Because the God's not going to tell somebody else your his vision for your life. You know, that's not to say you can't have mentors and people you, because the Bible does say in a multitude of counselors, there is wisdom and safety. So you have people you trust and you have people who are above you, older than you, wiser than you, of course, that you go to and, and reference. But I'm talking about the people that you come into contact with at work or the people that you come into contact with at school or the people you just come about every day. And be careful who you tell your dreams to. Don't just, don't, if God gives you a vision for your life, don't, I know it's exciting. I've been there, but don't just start 
start yelling it out to everybody because not everybody wants the best for you. Not everybody wants to see you succeed because here's what I'm trying to, here's my point, okay? If it was easy, everybody would do it, okay? Uh, Miles Monroe said, 90% of the people in this world are only reaching 10% of their full potential in life. Okay, if there wasn't challenges, if there wasn't setbacks, if there wasn't distractions, if there wasn't roadblocks, if there wasn't moments where you had to come to the end of yourself and say, God, you're the only thing I see in this situation, but because you told me that you're gonna do it, I believe you're gonna do it. If there wasn't situations like that, then everybody would just be able to walk the, uh, I guess, golden, straight, easy, narrow path and get to the end of it and say, look what I did, look what I did. Where that's not what God wants. N uh, not a lot of people. God has a great, amazing vision and plan for every single person on this earth. I strongly believe that with all my heart. But most people are not willing to go the distance with God to say, God, you told me what we like to do is say God I want to do something great with my life and then the moment things get hard we say oh well it must not have been God who said it that must have just been my imagination God doesn't change his mind God does not contradict his word the Bible says in James that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways so if the Bible says it about man God's not double-minded you know, if God's placed a revelation in your heart, if God's placed a dream there, and all of a sudden, and you say, yeah, God, that's what I want, and the moment things get hard, and emotionally it doesn't feel good anymore, the shine's kind of worn off. It's like when you get a new pair of shoes, and like you don't want to wear it in the rain or the snow or whatever, and so you only wear it like three times, and then they get a little bit dirty, so you might take them out on a run, uh, and then they start to get dirtier and dirtier, and so once the shine and everything kind of wears off, you go from, oh no, I can't wear these, like, you know it's exciting they're new you want to show them off to like oh these old things like yeah whatever don't don't get like that with your dream you know um you have to be willing to to go through that refinement to dig your heels in and say no matter what um god i believe you're gonna finish what you started and it's painful and it hurts but you have to be see the finish line um, you don't stop. You can see the finish line with God. Don't stop just because there's a hurdle there. Sometimes you're going to have to jump. Sometimes you're going to have to trip. Sometimes you're going to mess it up. But as long as your attitude is day after day is getting back up every morning. That's why I love every morning. Just get up and, and look outside and say thank even if you don't feel it you think i'm happy every single morning sometimes i hate waking up at six in the morning man I, I just want some coffee i just want to be in bed but to look out the window and say god thank you for another day you've given me a dream and even if you don't know what you would ask god ask god if your dream for your life can be accomplished on your own without god it's not big enough so start praying start writing start saying god what is the what is the massive thing you want to accomplish in me because it's there you just have to look for it you have to be willing to work for it and don't let anybody don't tolerate anything that gets in the way of that once you once you have a vision from god um for your life don't let anybody stand in the way of that um, so yeah, that's just that's what has been on my mind all day as you go into the spring and the summer um, You know the as we come into the new season start a new season of your life Just just start writing things down uh, start dreaming big with God because he's so So awesome and he's gonna take all your pain and use it for a purpose even if you can't see it. I promise um, and, and I'm like I, I'm by no means perfect at this. I'm, I'm still learning this every day in my own life It's just something that God really put on my heart to share um, and so, uh, you know, uh, I, God bless you all and thank you so much for each one of you. Thank you for, uh, for watching to the end of this semi long video and, uh, I hope you all tomorrow's Friday. So enjoy your Friday, enjoy your weekend and God bless.